In this clip, we're going to be keying our roto. Okay, so to key the roto, it's actually pretty easy. We just need to go to this last frame where everything was good and then start to move backwards a little bit. So I usually like to go only a little bit at a time. So maybe just a few frames this way. And then what we'll do is actually select, we can either select the whole thing or we can just select this bottom area here. And once everything is selected, you can see I'm just kind of left clicking and dragging to select all of those points. And then I move in and then I can move them into place. Now some of them are gonna match up really nicely and others will not. Now another issue that I have is that because I can see the robot here, it is kind of giving me a bit of trouble. So I'm going to jump back over here to where I'm just looking at the roto and the background footage. So that is kind of taken away. I don't have to worry about those issues. And if I just click over here, it's gonna deselect all of that stuff for me. And then I can go in and really start more individually manipulating those handles. So come in here, click away if you need to deselect. And most of this you should be able to do with kind of those, you know, those big sweeping motions I was showing you where we're just grabbing a whole bunch of things and just kind of moving them all at once. You don't have to get in there and get, you know, quite so, just so, so perfect. We just want it to be really close. And most of the time you do need a rotoscope to be really, really perfect. But in this case, just because it's all this foliage, um, there's a little bit of wiggle room with something like this. So that's kind of a plus. There we go. Maybe just a little bit more there. And it looks like this one's just a little bit off here. I'm going to undo that because I want this part to move as well. There we go. And then this one will just move up a bit. And if you're, if you had trouble drawing your rotoscope, um, well, if you just didn't have enough time to do it, just jump into your exercise files and you can grab kind of where I'm at at the beginning of this lesson or last lesson. And you'll have the same roto that's already all drawn out for you and you don't have to go through and do every single one. Okay. Now, so now I've got two points. I've got a key here and here. And because it automatically does a key wherever you draw the rotoscope, you don't even have to tell it to key. It just is automatically doing it as we're moving that around. Now I want to check right in between the keys and make sure that it's moving at the right speed. And it looks like we're close, but not perfect. So that's usually how I like to go. I'll make one here and then over here and then go in between them and then start to kind of move those around a bit. So just like that. Perfect. So this is really helping a lot. And so on. So then you can continue uh, to just manipulate these to fit with your footage. And rotoscoping isn't, you know, the funnest thing that was ever invented, but some people kind of find it relaxing that it's just, you know, a sort of therapeutic thing. And then other people hate it and they pay other people to do it for them. So, you know, not everybody, not everybody's cut out to do it. <laughs> um, so I'm kind of getting close here on getting those in place. That looks pretty good right there. So I would continue this process on kind of, you know, going about the same distance away from my last keyframe, moving it and then going in between. Now, we start to run into an issue once we start back here. So now I start to have some leaves in the foreground kind of coming up through here. So what we're going to do for the purposes of this project is not actually start the footage at the very beginning. We're starting it just a little bit later. So just right over here around frame 90 is where I'd like that to be. So just really quickly as a little bonus for you, the way that we can do that, you may be wondering, you know, in After Effects, I can just kind of pull the side, you know, the work area over here and then that part is gone. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and hit 
the S key over here. And instead of frame range being zero to 306, I'll just change it to 90 to 306. And now we're only dealing with this part here. So that's gonna make it a little bit easier so we just don't have quite so much to match move later on once we get the, you know, more of the robot um, stuff involved in the camera, all of that kind of thing. So I would just continue my process on down through here until I got that rotoscope to match up perfectly with all my footage. Now sometimes you're gonna have a second roto maybe for other little parts that stand out. So, you know, there's, there's more advanced techniques and I would encourage you to go on Pluralsight's website and check out rotoscoping for Nuke if you really really want to get into it but this is the basics and this is a pretty basic easy shot to do this with so I'm going to meet back up with you in the next lesson where we're going to learn how to use a roto as a mask input